Hey, what up, everybody? It's Hollywood Unlocked and Censored. I'm Jason Lee. Hey, hey, it's DJ Damage. And so somehow I don't know why we haven't had this beautiful woman on the show before. Uh, I was mad before she texted me, but I'm not mad anymore. But Tahiri is here. Hi, hey. Tahiri. Hey, guys. Who are you? What you up? Know, I, I feel like I haven't seen you in a long time. And I know we don't run into each other that often, but I've always thought you were really beautiful. And... Hey and you do stay out the way is that intentional or like is that intentional you just stay out all you just stay all the way out the way um i'm, I'm busy working i think that you know if you're not doing anything at or anything or, or um beefing with someone online or just doing something outlandish then people seem to think that you're not working i'm, I'm moving I, i'm working i've been working for the last 10 years in the industry i just you know i i'm just working i guess i've been pretty lucky to stay out of people's radars when it comes to certain things mm -hmm. so you um you know you when did you come onto the scene how long have you been in the business you've been around for a minute since maybe 2000 and i think uh right before 2008 maybe seven sometime on uh, youtube but my first cover was uh the ending of the king magazine i closed it out uh right when print was coming uh, when social media was taking over so i've been in the game for about shit i would say 10 plus and you and Melissa are close friends. Yes, yes, I love me some Melissa. So back in the day, or back in that era when King Magazine and when I feel like real, um, I don't know how you feel about the word vixen. I the people know you as a vixen from yeah, back it, in that era, right? Back right? In that era, um, it was it was a it was it was important. It mattered. We, you know right. what I'm saying. And then eventually, just got watered down to something. A lot different, you know that, what I'm saying? That, that was what I was gonna ask you. So that era when when women were vixens and really idolized in the world of hip hop and uh, for all the right reasons, right? Given that fantastical, that fantasy lifestyle. Talk and about stuff. it, Jason, talk about it. No, I mean, look, Tahiri and Melissa, uh, we, we already know, I'm gay, but I still know. Uh, on the college dorm walls. That's what I call it. it. Mattered. I remember looking at, at Melissa, at uh, Vita, and at um, Gloria Velez, and they were like, I used to say, you know, I'm going to walk the BT catwalk one day, or I'm going to host, you know, the basement. I used to look up to these beautiful women. Like, if it wasn't for Melissa and Vita and, you know, and uh, Gloria Velez, I, you know, they paved the way to so many other women in the game. And what really is interesting to me about the Vixen era is that those weren't wimp the women like you all who were at the top of that game were not fucking to get there it was a it was a real respected really mm -hmm. like the hip-hop men really like loved you all and then the women idolized you and it was a real industry that you all made made a very respectable living from Absolutely. where do you where do you think the transition happened where people were like uh i'm just gonna go do what i gotta do to get the bag and then the bag really ain't even what the bag was back then Social media. Hmm. I, I think it's just, you know, when uh, Twitter, MySpace, it was the gift and a curse. You know what I'm saying? It's the good and the bad with everything in life. You know, it, it was too much of everything really quickly. Um, it watered down. It was easier to, uh, to not, it's easier to not work as hard as the other women did before me. And, and uh, the new women did not know their value. So they would do stuff for $500 in a flyer. You know what I'm saying? So it affected us women that came up in the game and knew that if I was on a hit show, then that's millions and millions of viewers on TV. And I should charge thousands to be seen yeah. because I'm, cause I'm putting in that work because I'm on a hit show. So here it comes Chardonnay, for instance. I remember one time I was, uh, I was, I was my rate extremely high and came i think it was a flavor of love and it was like well tahiri what do you mean you want um chardonnay is doing a 500 and i was like i don't care if you have pinot grigio <laughs> you know what I'm saying? like i know my work my my work like i know my value i know where i come from i know what i want to do i know what i'm doing so it's just it, it just happened too fast things just started to uh snowball into uh the quantity versus quality i would say yeah and How so you oh, go ahead. Sorry, i wanted to know like because a lot of those vixens that i looked up to with the King Magazine, everything weren't able to transition. How were you able to transition into that social media era? Because you started 07, 08, and you're still around today where we're doing an interview. Uh, because I believe everyone has a story. I mm. think that um, it's all about timing as well. Uh, for a lot of the other vixens, uh, the world probably wasn't ready when they started to, or they started to evolve too late. 
with me, I believe I paced myself and I added a voice to that imagination um, that you guys saw in that cover or on that video. I came with a story. Um, I came at a time with, where YouTube was starting to become a thing. Yeah. Um, and I was unafraid to speak up. I was unapologetically me. Um, and um, I allowed the world in. So that's where I believe I started to establish myself different. So I kind of saw something that was amazing and I respected these women. But then as you kind of, like they become, I wouldn't say your idols, but like I respected them. And then I said, okay, wait a minute, where do I twist and turn? How do I pivot this business? Um, and then print was going out of business. So then that's where Melissa and a lot of women made so much money printing calendars and magazines. And now it's all social media and everything is moving at the speed of light. And so then you start to kind of figure out how to switch it up a little. And so I've just paced myself and I'm also not being afraid to try new things. Back then, I didn't think, you know, I always thought I'd be famous somehow, but I have a criminal justice degree. I was supposed to be a cop and married to probably a captain of, you know, <laughs> whatever. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then here I am. So I just pretty much would be afraid to try radio, afraid to try movies, afraid to be do interviews, afraid to host shows, afraid to do red carpets. But every time I was afraid, I just jumped out the window and did it. And every time I jumped out, the parachute worked. But see, but see, hearing you speak now and having seen you before and met you and, and watching you from a distance, I mean, I feel like the similarities or the connection between you and Melissa beyond your friendship is that you both are smart. You both have forward thought. So it's not like you're just living in right now and you're thinking right. about this as a business versus an experience. Right. Where where did the change go and who's to blame for? I mean, we know social media was part of it, but in terms of the lack of respect for women now. At the, that are participating in that part of the culture, who's to blame? Is it the men or is it the women who've changed their own, seeing their own value? I believe both. I believe that men have always been feeding some type of disrespect, whether it's, you know, in their music um, and the way they treat women. Um, but then I believe that women, you know, it comes from home. It's the way you've been raised. Is um, not knowing your value, not knowing that we do run the world. Um, that, you know, vagina is the demise of it. Like, you know what I'm saying? We are in control. We take the penis. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to take it if we don't want to. Although men would love to think that, oh, she didn't give me nothing because, you know, I didn't feel like putting pressure on her. No, buddy, I run the show. I know I'm going to give you some vagina if I, if the minute I see you. So I think that um, we're both to blame because you will only do as much as I allow you to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's just both ends of the spectrum. But why don't more women get that? Like now there's this whole protect black women. And let's be clear, Tahiri's Dominican, but Dominicans are black. I know people yeah. have their own issue with that. And I love Dominicans. I'd be up here talking about how I'm gonna go to your country and find like three or four and bring them back. Yes. Um, but, but <laughs> you know, there's this whole protect black women hashtag now that's become this this thing that I see rappers and people who don't never talk about protecting black women all of a sudden jumping on the platform. But it's like, you're, are you doing it because Megan Thee Stallion and Tory Lanez are famous and then that will get you talked about because protecting black women is also not cheating on them, not emotionally abusing them, not not abandoning them with their children, you know, right. making sure that they're good. Yes, I what agree. Um, I think, again, like everything else, it's just that it's more in our faces now. I think this is something that's always happened. It, it all comes from home, how you've been raised, what you've been taught, your experiences in life, how you look at life. I think that now it's just that it's, it, it's, there's a microphone and a microscope. Like, you know, we're watching this shit. Um, uh, everything goes viral if it's negative. Um, there's hashtags. So news travels fast. I think this is something that's been around, been happening. And, and there's always the group of people that are fighting pro, you know, uh, uh, better in, in everything. Um, just like, you know, everything's happening right now in the world. This, the world is super thick and a lot is happening, all this negativity, but this is stuff that hasn't really changed. We just, it wasn't in our faces. You have to turn on the news for this. Right. You would have to reach page, page six in the newspaper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To even think about what people were wearing at that club or who died or, you know, whatever's happening in the world. Remember, we would have to come home from school and your mom was watching the news or some shit now. Yeah. yeah. It's at a, the click of our fingers. So are you, you're, you're from New York? Are you born yeah. and raised in New York? I'm from Harlem. Harlem. I know. I saw that in the notes. <laughs> By the way, I lived uh, on 177th in Fort Washington, which I'm very Ooh. proud of. 
Super uh, Dominican. <laughs> oh yeah. When I moved to New York, I was like, tell me where the Dominicans at. I'm gonna move in that community. But what I love about New York is just the grit of it, uh, the architecture, the food, uh, the diversity. What uh, do you do you credit uh, Harlem or New York to like being a strong Dominican woman? Yeah, I'm definitely a. Uh, I am definitely a product of my environment. You know, I've been blessed to travel the world uh, because of work, uh, and I realized early on that I was a tad bit uh, super, like just always running around and and I, greeting people wasn't something that came natural to me and. If you go down south, everything is a little slower. And I was a bit aggressive when it came to the way I moved. And if I'm on aisle two and you said, good, good afternoon, ma'am, I would look at you like, is he really talking to me? Like that whole New York swag. <laughs> um, and then after traveling the world and seeing and observing and absorbing how people are, you know, like how people live. And it's just beautiful. I've become this other person. I've become this person that I, I say hi to everyone. I'm warm. I understand that that I understand why my friends from other parts of the world come here and they feel overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, we do not like, we are like, even the taxi cabs over here are rough. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I've learned so much now. And yes, I, I really attribute to, even our slang is like, you know, sometimes a girl will get on the phone with you and a guy says to me, I just felt like I was talking to Jay-Z cause she's like, yo, you know, it's a woman. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's New York is uh, the concrete jungle. The New York yeah. See, I fell in love with the Dominicans in New York, but when I went to Dominican Republic, I think people that like just the way you just described our country, when you go to DR, those people are so nice and so sweet and so like nurturing. And I mean, this guy told me he loved me and I was ready to just move him back that day. I'm like, damn, I've been looking for you in my country for 40 something oh, years. No, no, we're just Caribbean. It's Caribbean people are warm. Every part of the Caribbean, like, you know, uh, like I said, I've traveled and I see the difference. It, it literally, um, I've grown from that. I've grown but, from but it. Why are we so angry here, though? We're the land of prosperity and freedom. Like, why? Are we it's, stress. it's stress. It's stress. It's um, it's the cost of living. It's the the working environment. It's the, the lack of culture. Power. The lack of culture. The way things are changing. Um, we're always in a rush, but I don't know in a rush to where. I don't think that. I don't think that we are taught early on that. There's no sense of speed if you have no direction. You know what I'm saying? Ah, that was a good one. But we yeah. New Yorkers are just going. I, I don't want to switch gears, but I want I do want to ask you, do you feel like an innovator? Because I remember back when I was who who cares how long ago it was? I was watching you on YouTube. Uh -huh. And I remember fast forward, a lot of the things you were doing on YouTube was things I started seeing in reality shows. And even today, when you look at the structure of how people make YouTube content and make all this money and buy the house and whatever they do, I've seen that kind of start with you and you know your counterpart that you were doing it with. Do you feel like an innovator in that movement? I feel like we were definitely ahead of our times. Um, I really didn't give a fuck what was going on. I was busy bartending, making hella money, coming home to this person with a camera in front of me and me saying, stop playing with me. You don't even know what you're doing, rapper. You know what I'm saying? And then it snowballed into something crazy. And I think that, yes, I think even being on red carpets was like a big thing. Uh, I started, I did the SBs, the VMAs, the BTs one year back to back to back. And this was, I remember somebody else's manager, I won't say no name, said, oh, me watching Tahiri and her being on a carpet actually interviewing uh, kind of like a light bulb went off and he was like, these girls might be smart. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because we're we good, we look good, but nobody really ever mm -hmm. realized that there's a lot of smart women that like looks and smarts come in in hand. Like not everyone that looks good is dumb. Um, so yeah, I feel like I've started. I, I definitely, definitely, like I said, always was afraid, but always tried new things, and and I've been successful at it. I don't think I get my credit either. Not that I want it, you know, I did it, but like I look back at the women that paved the way for me, and I'm like, yo, that's like if it wasn't for her, blah blah. blah. We, everybody's out there, you know, the new generation really has no respect for people that paved the way nowadays. Well, that's even in hip hop too. I heard one of the rappers, I forgot who it was, said, uh, it says about Tupac and Biggie weren't weren't like revolutionists in hip hop, and I'm just like, we're not even gonna go there. That's not even a that that that's a this generation not having the respect for previous. Education generations. too. It's the ear of music. Yeah, like, it's the education too. 
get stuck on a sound. Like I knew Cool in the Gang and I'm Dominican. You know what I'm saying? I learn, I love music, therefore I am in tune and I just love music, period. So I'm going to like different genres and I'm going to look into them and study them. So I think this generation is, is a microwavable generation. They're all ready to just get in and get out instead of actually putting in that work and respecting who paved the way for them. So I, I had a longevity though. Yeah, for sure. No, I have a Dominican guy, a friend of mine, who recently told me the other day here in L.A. that Romeo Santos is the Dominican Michael Jackson. Is that true? Yes. He is major. He is, is, he, is, he, is he like a big deal? Because honestly, yeah. he, could walk, he could walk by me on the street and I wouldn't know who he is. But he was like, are you crazy? This is a Michael Jackson. I'm like, yes, oh. we definitely do compare um our big artist to like a Michael or Jay-Z. Because I, 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 I say shit like that. But yes, he is arenas and arenas and a god in, in you know, in my world. So let me ask you, why do you think, because me and Cardi have this conversation all the time where she gets really frustrated that she she's very much standing behind black issues and black people because she's right. Trinidadian and, and, uh, and Dominican and she believe, she she's like, I'm black. But people I'm online black. are always telling her, you're not black. Don't talk about black issues. Have you ever gotten that? And why do you think that is? I, my friends, right? I wouldn't say my black friends because I consider me black. Um, I don't believe my hips came from. Where did my hips come from? Where did all this fucking like <laughs> sugar, brown sugar comes from? Like it couldn't have come from the Europeans if they didn't kind of. The difference between everyone is that we got put on different boats and wherever you wound up, you wound up. Right. But we're black. If you go in somewhere and you get in, you got an interview, job interview, you're either black or you're white. Right. Like that's just it. Um, I get that from my friends. Uh, they, you know, I get that from guys I've dated. You're not black, and I'm like, then what the fuck am I? I just know Spanish and eat rice and beans with everything. Right. They just don't that boat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, I do get I get slack for that. Um, I don't care. I I mean, my grandmother. I come from a, a home where my grandmother, who's in her 80s now, she they don't bring a black man home. Hmm. And, and she, she said, "What time?" I, I remember. She, when, she's Dominican. Yeah, she's Dominican. She's really white, pearly white teeth and. Fine hair, like the different texture, because I don't even believe in good and bad hair, because as a child, they said my hair was bad. So oh. now I have to trick I'm like, what the fuck you mean my hair is bad? No, my hair is different. You know what I'm saying? But I know that now. Uh, and my grandmother said, don't bring a black man home. She said- Did I would she say to, why? She said, because I have to refine my race. Wow. Right? But guess what? My grandfather is black as ever. However- <laughs> Her husband. Oh, listen. Wait, oh, wait, oh. wait. Her husband? Yes, my grandfather, may he rest in peace. Black as ever, however, <laughs> swaggy, all you see was teeth, and if you turned off the lights, you would see his eyeballs. But I couldn't bring, bring a black man home. <laughs> but that's just the way that generation was, you know, born, they were raised and, and they were taught. Yeah, I was just uh, about to say that. Yeah, so I don't, I, I've forgiven her for all of that. Uh, and guess what? My sister's married to Jamaican, my other sister's married to a black man. I mean, I'm single, but I, I love me some chocolate. But how do we get people to see past the division that was created in our in our in our community that we have no control over? We didn't control the destinations of the boats. Why? Why? What do we do to bring our communities together to say like we're all we're all melanin popping black people, regardless of where our lives originated? Uh, I I you know I think it's all in educating uh, the next generation. I think is us having kids and. And you know, and and actually taking our time to kind of feed them the proper uh, the knowledge that we, because we were lied to in school. Like everything I've ever read in school, I'm so fucking pissed off right now. Yeah. I went to DR in March right before the pandemic, and my father's like walking me past Christopher Columbus's whatever, and I had to check him. And he's got six kids out there, and the six little kids that are my brothers and sisters. I was like, let me tell you about this motherfucking lie. Yeah. Like I got really hyped and upset. And my father then looked at me. He was like, you're right. I was like, how dare you let them teach me that shit in school? <laughs> so I think our jobs now is, is to become better parents, better uncles, better, um, you know, aunts, better people for the newer generation. Uh, I, though, since I started in this industry, I've had, uh, I've, I've been really like, it's like I feel like I'm suffocating because I'm too black for my Latinos and too Latinos for my blacks. But I think, I, but I think, I think that's the conflict people that are, and I'm going to say this. Feel. Yeah, it's a conflict that people who are white or dark skinned don't understand that light skinned people find themselves in. Like, I have right. felt I, I, I'm, I'm hip hop, but I'm also merengue, so what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I've always said, I remember wanting to speak about this early on. They said, to hear you shut up, that'll be career suicide. I'm like, no. 
I'm like, look at me. I'm like, why don't I get invited to the Black Girl Magic? You know, why can't I be Black Girl Magic? I'm Black Girl Magic, but then why am I not invited to the Latin Grammys? And why do I sit with my my friends that are artists and they, they're creating music, but in order for that hip hop song to make it in a Spanish station, they have to recreate that song three different versions. You've already taken that magic out of that record because it's not Latin enough. What it like, where do we belong? I've always said that. So yeah. I mean, I, it, mm -hmm. I think, people i think it's us i think it starts with us like i said it's educating ourselves and accepting that you're either black or white yeah We're all in this together facts so yeah, we we are, how, how do you feel about the narrative where some black women i'm not gonna say all black women think this but you know latin women take us as black men from the black from the black community say oh you take our men i don't i don't i don't think anybody takes anything i think people are attracted to what they're attracted to you know what I'm saying? Well, the, Car I, I, the Kardashians are taking the black men, but that's a different show. I mean, these black men are dating the Kardashians. They're digging the clout. They ain't digging them. Yeah, well, well, whatever that is, it's it's working out or not for them. God bless them. I just yeah. know that I don't believe that people take anyone. I believe that I'm attracted to chocolate. I'm not discriminating. You know, I'm an equal opportunist. If I am feeling the Asian guy, <laughs> I am going to rock out. Um, but something happens to me when chocolate walks by. But I refuse to argue with stupid people now because when I say, I love, I love me a Dominican, I was in the DR having lunch. I was at the little corner and, and my ex had told me, be careful when you go out there because they got some of them got gold hair and gold eyes. I said, shut ain't, no, ain't no nigga walking around with no gold hair and no gold I eyes. I got cousins like that. Tahiri, I was sending their photos. Tahiri, I was mid plantain. Motherfucker walking mid -plantain. by with gold hair. Motherfucker walk Motherfucker walk by with gold hair and gold eyes. I, you would, if you would have saw the video of how thirsty I was at that point. I, and, I, and I didn't understand why people don't get, I love black men. And when I say Dominican, I think that's a black man. So, yes. so but I love how you articulated though, because I, I feel like we do need to have more conversations where we can start becoming a little bit more educated and loving each other more where whether you're Haitian whether you're African or you're Dominican or American, we're all people of color, black people who you know should love each other. And when I say chocolate, I just say different kinds of chocolate. You know what I'm saying? Just chocolate. Just there's something about there's something about uh, just you know a black man. And I'm not saying a, a Dominican black man is a black man to me. You know what I'm saying? It's just something about just you know that color, that melanin, that you know. But I don't. I would date me a light skin brother too. I mean, if you, you there's a couple dudes probably that I dated, and you're like, y'all must have been color blonde, but it worked at the time. Okay, wait, so now you dated Trey Songs a long time ago? No, I never dated Trey Songs. We hung so, out. We so let me say out. this. You, like Melissa, have a list of people you've been linked to, and she has said, anytime a pretty girl like me stands next to a man, I'm out of here. Has that happened to you too? Yeah, I have so many bodies out there that I didn't even know. <laughs> I'm going to have to stand right here next to my vagina right now. Like, it's, you know... After being in this business so long, I stopped giving a fuck because me and my vagina know what we did and I can do the fuck I want to. <laughs> and that's y'all's business. Yes, but um, it surprises me how some people do Google. Like I've had a guy I've dated his mom Google and have questions and I'm like, no, I never dated French. No, I never dated Puff. No, I never dated 50. Like I was on a set with him. We did, you know, do you think about me? Like stuff like that. Like, so yeah, if I, if I'm at a game, then people think I'm there because not because my girlfriend is, you know what I'm saying? There's always the bigger well, name. Well, maybe because you bought your own ticket or because you earned your way in the room. Yeah. Yeah. That too, yeah. because you can afford our own shit. But see, but see to hear, here's the problem I have with people like you and Melissa. If God, God knew what he was doing, not giving me a vagina. Cause I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, these walls would be beat down. I would be, it's court -tied. I would be, I would be, I mean, it, but people don't realize it takes a lot of self-love, self-respect, <laughs> mm -hmm. self-respect to be as beautiful as you are, have the access that you have and have the swag that you have and have the desire from some many men that women and some of us guys like, and to mm -hmm. not be a hoish at times. Cause I would have been a hoe for sure. At least one decade. Well, I think at least one decade. No, I think that every guy I know have said that to me, like, dang, like, how do you, like, if I was you, if I had a vagina, I'd be fucking like, but those are the same guys that want to talk bad about a female. Yep. Uh, I feel like every woman, I don't give a fuck who she is, has had her whole phase. 
Or, we all or, had or, a, or let's just say everybody has had a whole phase. Everybody. Like everybody had a whole phase, whether it's you, you got heartbroken, somebody broke your heart and you lost it for a couple buns, whether you was born in a hot pocket and you just want to be giving out the buns, whether you don't know because you you know you weren't taught that self love and you were, you're out here trying to find love in all the wrong places. We all are guilty of being holes at one point in yeah. our lives. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, I, now to hear I'm speaking for the regular guy here, right? Because when we look at it from the outside looking in, it seems like you you got to be a don't, don't hit don't like, hit on Tahiri. Don't hit anybody on hating. Her. I'm just oh, asking. No, no, don't, no, don't hit on her. Hit. Oh no, I'm not hitting on her. I'm just speaking for us regular guys. It seems like to give it to Harry, you got to be somebody of some kind of stature, celebrity, or whatever. Do you talk to the average guy, or what kind of guy are you into? That's what it looks like, damage. See, not everything you see is. I really know. I'm just I'm speaking for the average guy. I know I that. Know an average guy is i think that everybody is a person and um the, it's the different rooms we're in you know what i'm saying it's the that's, what, that that's what i'm saying even scratch that what kind of guy are you into uh i have standards okay. i work really hard so i'm not i'm not afraid to say i'm never i'm not dating a broke guy i'm not dating a, that's fine a, yeah tell me more I why should i work really hard if by myself i do well then with you we have to do well together extra like if i'm here we got if we're here together, then we got by the time we're done trying to fucking figure out this foundation we're build, we're building, we have to be up here somewhere. If not, you're wasting my time. And wait, wait, but you said like, that you said that a little defensive, like you argued with somebody about this before. Oh yeah, because um I think that very <laughs> long here we used to say shit like it's the chemistry, it's the um it's love is love. But listen, bro, <laughs> if you can't hold if you can't hold it down and you you can't hold me down if something happens. I'm not every woman wants to be taken care of somewhere or another. I don't okay. need you to. I don't need you to, but if I want you to, if I happen to need you down the line, then I'm going to not, I don't want to wonder if you got me. So yeah, I need a man who's about his business. I need somebody who's funny. I love teeth, height. Joe Budden is funny, and Joe Budden has good teeth. And I need someone, he just got teeth, didn't he? I heard, I think. Um he got new ones. Uh and I think I, I just need somebody who's smart. Okay. Joe Budden is smart, so I have to ask because you went back on Love and Hip Hop, and I was so glad to see you back. I really love uh, this, the last season that you guys did. I always compare our show to your show, and I'm like, okay, people, this shit is trash. Like, stop bringing me to a fucking potluck in a goddamn rosary over at the Salvation Army when New York is at a rooftop or chilling somewhere, right? Uh, you went back into Love and Hip Hop. Uh, it was a great season, and it looked like you and Joe, well, clearly your friendship is in a good place, right? Uh, Joe and I, I think depending on the month, there's times that we go a long time without speaking. Um, I'm really never the one to reach out. I always respected his space and time since the breakups, because I think we've broken up twice. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're on a show together. That's all I got to say about that. And there's days when, you know, we're in the same neighborhood, we might run into each other. We have connected during the filming or whatever, but it depends, you know. With Joey, there's no telling because um, it's just, it's, it's just he's pretty much unpredictable, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know how to explain. Um, I don't know if I trust him too much. Mm. So when it comes to Joe, it all depends. I'm always though very uh, I've, I've let go and let God of everything we've been through, so I've forgiven. And for everything he did so it's like whatever to me but how do you deal with having a public relationship with somebody who like him who's very public on a platform that's very public where the fans may still want you guys to be together but don't realize you both are leading individual lives where that may not be your reality i think that they realize that i think that um fans just don't know sometimes how to let go um i really wish they would <laughs> uh, I, you know, I know I live in my truth. Like, I know how I'm living. I don't really, I, I think I've gotten annoyed in 10 years. You know, there's days when you just like, you have time. You're like, you know, like I'm let him live his life. Let me live mine. But I don't really like, it is what it is. I, I think that the world, we were so fucking dynamic when we first got on the scene. And I'll say first, because he wasn't doing that well when we started that people just, you know, lived to us and, and love that relationship. But there's a lot that they don't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So They've only seen what the shows and the edits have allowed them to see. I'm sure that if they knew more of our lives, I'm sure they'd leave me alone and they would understand why. Hmm. 
So when you went back, there was the scene with you and Jonathan where you were about to let him have it, but you chose to count to 10 and walk away. Did you feel like that you were being led into some messy shit with sin since that was hit the mother of his kid and that they were trying to set you up to have conflict? Oh, you're talking about that club scene. Yeah. Um, uh, I think, I think where I sometimes I'm like really real, too real for reality TV sometimes. <laughs> um, and I speak my mind and I'm expressive and I felt a tad bit betrayed by Jonathan. That's mm -hmm. what that was. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, you know, it's when it comes to reality TV, especially just love and hip hop, everybody has their own agenda. Uh, everybody does what they need to do to continue having that airtime. Um, some of them have their like their the clicks and shit. I'm 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 like like I said I'm very free and equal and and I bond and I kick it. I'm I'm very far from a hypocrite or just like I don't know how to pretend when I'm not fucking with you. Um, so I really don't care about the airtime. I'm just there to do my thing, and that's why I continue to do my thing because mm -hmm. I'm not pressed. So I think that at that moment when it came to Jonathan, I just felt like, like we hang out off camera. You know what I'm saying? Like, and we don't talk about it on camera, but then on camera you act like you haven't seen me type of shit. Like that shit to me was annoying. Yeah. But I think it was just because I was mixing my personal and the show and some people just separate the two. I'm not good at doing that. I'm gonna just keep it. People criticize me to hear because I show up, I wait till they say go, I shoot, I go home, I don't answer phone calls. Even at Wild and Out, I love everybody, I show up, I do my thing, and then I go because when you're too real and you mix it, in your mind, you really believe it's all real, and then when somebody betrays you, you be ready to kill them, and it's not. Tell me, we're, we're people's, like, it's yeah. okay for you to say that we connected, that we hung out, that, you know what I'm saying, that you have that respect for me, that maybe we hadn't seen each other in a year, but now that we're fucking filming and we're flying, we've always been on, you know, we connected via phones and life's go, you know, life goes on and you've hanging out with, it's all, all that is cool, but still, like, I've never, ever disrespected you, the friendship, the respect we've had since we've known each other, and we get on screen and it's like, you're, I feel like you're picking sides when you shouldn't have to pick sides, because I'm not making you do that, like, I don't care about the Joe and Sin situation. Well, at the time, you know what I'm saying? So I just felt like I was being put in all these different situations that I, I didn't want no parts of when I was dealing with my own health scare. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm, I'm telling production that they really didn't care. So are you are you a woman who believes in never going back? Like, or do you, or would you go I back? Like, what are you talking about? I go green. I take. I, I go back to an ex. I have. Yeah. I'm good for that. I, I'm definitely just like a penis. I heard, you say, I, heard you, I heard you say recycling the penis. You know, that was something I took a note of earlier. I said, you know, I'm going to use that one. I'll credit you, but I'm going to use that at some point. I've definitely been guilty. I saw that at home. My father would break up with one, then go back to them, and it would be a problem with the present one. Like, I definitely, I saw that. I'm like, why do I do that? It's something about familiarity. It's something about convenient dick. You know what I'm saying? It's something about somebody knowing. <laughs> and, and I feel that... Uh, it's it's very it's you have to be careful because you might go back to a toxic situation because you're lonely because you need something familiar because you need to be held when you're like a single woman or you're having issues so yeah i've definitely been guilty of going back to a ex. so there was switching gears really quick uh there was this gay guy uh, who was a model working somewhere that you had you were physically assaulted by i think you ended up suing him he was on my facebook page i ended up unfollowing him as a result because it, to me it was just it was too much for me i didn't even know you but it was like too crazy yeah what where is that at now and, and for the people that don't know what i'm talking about can you just tell them what happened and yeah. what oh, it, was, it, was, it was it's it's done now um it was in 2014 i think uh, I don't know. I think, again, social media, reality TV star, I wasn't liked. I was closing the fashion uh, the fashion show. It was my first fashion show, Fashion Week. I didn't have security. So um, I've learned to, like, like, I don't feel safe walking without security when I'm out and about to places. It's 3 p.m., hair and makeup. I'm very pleasant all the time. I don't, I believe in leaving people with an experience. I was a waitress, bartender, you know. Um, so everywhere I go, I'm pleasant. So I walked in very unpleasant. He was unpleasant to everybody. Um, that was a part of like, you know, my hair and makeup people, people were nervous. So I learned, uh, midway through my career that, you know, people need you and you need them in, in order to create magic. So when I'm not feeling wanted somewhere, I exit. 
no need to beat, no need to have any issues about it. Just remove yourself. So that's what I was doing. And on my way out, just like anywhere else, when you have complaints, the people that hired me weren't there. You ask, what's your name? So you can have an, a note. So when people call you, you know, promoters or anybody who's got a cut check says they're arguing why you're not here. You're not ready in hair and makeup. I can say, well, you know, we weren't being treated kindly by the production's assistant or whatever I think he was at the time. Either way, I was walking out and he was, I guess he was having a bad day because he was just being rude to everyone. And I asked him his name and that turned into, bitch, who the fuck you think you are? And Ooh. him charging towards me. And next thing you know, he grabbed me by my hair. I threw my drink. It was just, it, we fought. Yeah. Um, defended myself. Yeah. Uh, and um, I was glad to have people with me. I had my hair and makeup. Nobody, everybody was trying to get them off me. Uh, and eventually they did, but I wound up having a bulge disc for that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, they made up a whole bunch of stuff. Um, it was very hurtful. I remember I, I, I wasn't going to the cops or anything, but eventually it led to that. Um, my team was like, you have to go. I was in the hospital. Um, and it just taught me to like, I don't really consider myself famous. Like I'm just a regular person. And so, so it did, just, so did, so did you not have security because it feels, it, it feels weird. It feels weird to have, to get my hair and makeup done. The show is at seven, three, it's 3 8 PM call time. I'm walking in with a burger. Cause I'm so busy. I haven't had a chance to eat, to have, you know, this happen to me. Um, so yeah, it, it was, uh, I had to fight back. And everybody around me was trying to pull him off me, but he had me by the hair, so he messed up my back somewhat. Off because I wasn't, you know, I remember they dragged me back into the theater. So we, you know, lost to and everything. And all you could hear them say is uh, that fucking reality TV star. So it was just a preconceived notion of who I was. I don't know why he was so angry. I don't know. I just know that some people are just not fans. So did so you, scary. so it settled now, everything's. Yeah. It's settled. I don't, you know, I, it's, it, it was, it was a nightmare. Um, so yeah, that's why now, you know, um, fans have come up and I'm friendly and I pictures and all that. Cause if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Like, you know what I'm saying? I could be doing a thousand other things. Thank you to all my fans, but I'm a little bit guarded. Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't know if you like me or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't think I don't think they see it through your lenses. You know, I mean, you're going through yeah. the day meeting lots of people, especially now with COVID. I ain't taking no pictures, and you can say whatever you want about me, but I'm glad that you made it through that okay. Because I remember reading that uh, online, and we and us covering it and stuff. I just felt like, damn, like I just thought that that was just. No, it's hard. I didn't really speak about that either. Um, I don't know. It's 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 just I still I still suffer like. I can't work out like I used to because of it. Yeah. So it's something that's a permanent damage. Um, and again, it was just because it. I don't know. I was a reality TV star, and he didn't think I was like he. I was. He didn't like me. Like yeah. I didn't know this man. Nothing. Yeah. Well, so, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're okay. But this is leading into the other thing. I watched you on Marriage Bootcamp now, and this is why I reached out personally. Like I don't reach out to people that I don't know because I don't know what people think of me, and then it's kind of weird. It's like, hey, you know, um, and I know how it is too when you're on TV and things go viral. There's so many people coming at you that I did reach out to say, hey, you know, I didn't like what I saw, and I'll get into that, and I'd love to talk to you because I watched Marriage Bootcamp, which was a really good cast of people with a whole bunch of conflict, and that's great for reality TV. Right. But beyond the entertainment, like you had to go through what I thought was, um, it was aggressive, it was humiliating, it was uh, disrespectful. I don't even know who Vado is, um, and but for those of you watching, she's on Marriage Bootcamp with a guy named Vado. I guess he was your boyfriend at the time. Uh, we were, I'm dating. We're trying to figure it out. Uh, I've known Vado since I was, shit, for 20 years. We know each other from Harlem. Um, we're childhood friends. Um, and we've definitely been there for each other through my other ups and downs and relationships. You know, we're trying to figure it out. You know, in our world, you date and scheduling wise, you can say you've dated for fucking two years and it's really been one because of the time you see them once a month. And so we were trying to figure it all out. Um, and that's where we were. Um, we walked into the house. And you know, some some people on camera turn into other people. Uh, and and, that, that's, and that, that's nine times out of ten. 
right? Um, and I, I know the world doesn't understand that they see 60 minutes of 24 hours that they edit and what makes it on TV are the best situations or the punchlines and the clickbait. You know what I'm saying? What's gonna make a number one show. So, um, watching the shit, I, ha I can't watch the show by myself because um, I, I just don't have, I, I don't have it, I can't do it. But on top of that, like everybody's just so busy in my comments and they don't realize that they see seconds of whatever happened. So, and let's, that so let's set it up. So you guys are sitting there in a, it's a session or a group? group. Uh, it's, a, it's a house, it's five couples and we do drills. We do two drills a day, drills on, um, helping each other out to communicate better, how to be, how to, how to actually, ha you know, work on your relationship. So there's mm -hmm. a drip. Um, that particular day, we'd been in the house for maybe three to four days. I don't remember. Uh, since the minute he got there, he was just completely disrespectful, which it doesn't make it on air. What makes it on air are my punchlines. Like I'll say some shit and it just sounds like, oh shit, that's going to, Let's go with it. So I look like the aggressor verbally, right? Mm -hmm. So it kind of helps to, it helps to, it helps my storyline. In other words, she's been hit before by a man. She is aggressive. She is angry. So let's go with all her punchlines and forget everything that led to that situation. So that day we had shock bracelets. I saw so, that. so he had my remote so he can control the shocking me. Here's the thing. The way it aired on TV, it looks like he was following all the directions and he was shocking me for a reason, mm -hmm. right? He wasn't, he was shocking me. He was turning me into Frankenstein. Mm. He was shocking for no reason. Um, he was also drunk. He was drinking Hennessy and Tito's. So he had dark and light and he was smoking. Mm -hmm. Now in the 20 years I know this man, I've never seen him smoke weed. Mm. So now he's lit. I'm not thinking anything of it. I'm in a house, everybody's drinking. We have these shock bracelets and you keep shocking me. Mm -hmm. So I remember sitting in front of him, This none of this aired. I remember sitting in front of him saying, you know, I care about you, I wouldn't hurt you for no reason. Why are you hurting me? I did that, I remember leaving the room twice and telling him that I'm going to, I'm going to separate myself from it so he won't shock me. I don't even want to give him a reason to. And then there was a lot of, Whatever on whatever the reasons for him shocking me, he was trying to kind of entice me to do. So one of them was like, "When to hear he doesn't listen to you, so he he'll say something to me low, and so I can say what, and kind of like I can't hear you. So then he could shock me purposely. So he thought there was a game, but this whole time he's hurting me. Mm -hmm. So I like I, and I said I walked away twice. I walked from one side of that from the back of the, the the yard to the other to sit with the other uh, cast members, and it didn't it didn't stop. So I finally flipped out, took the bracelet off, and then he continued with his mouth ongoing. And that's when I saw apples. And of course, I didn't think that the apples were gonna hit anything. I actually threw it at his lap, but then the cameras, the edits are so amazing. I look like I played softball. Um, so of course well, one, I- one of, one of the apples hit him in the face, right? I, I don't, I, so I think it even went by. I don't fucking know. It All looked I like you, you hit him pretty good. You, you had some good aim. Hey. Yeah. And, and, and I know sometimes they add sound effects, but it what? sounded it's, like Apple bro, but come on now, Jason. I mean, sound that, like you sound like you baby it looked like you that, wind that, that thing up. It looked like I aimed to kill this boy, and of course I wouldn't do that. So well, I, I don't think anybody thought you were gonna kill him with the apples. Well, listen, but you were pretty accurate with the apples. I <laughs> I am telling you that I was wrong for that, but I accepted my, I, I completely like took accountability for that in the house. I even apologized for it. And then 40 they minutes- They didn't later, air that, did they? Did they no, show you a uh, Okay. Yeah, because no. apologies are boring. It's not good TV. No, no, they didn't. Um, they didn't air that. Uh, also, and, and after doing so, there was a break about 40 minutes later. So that's why it was so unexpected to have him jump on me like that. Cause it, after that they had to switch gears, so then we had to go to the boot camping room. Okay, wait, so, here, so here's the scene that I was talking to earlier, talking about earlier. So you were sitting there having a conversation. First of all, I'll go back to the shocking. I, I watching it back, even without knowing how the editing went down and haven't been in reality TV, I, like I get it. Um, it was a lot of shocking that just it was just a lot of shocking. I, I was just like, yeah. why is she? Why? Who would want to shock their partner? 
so many but times or at all, you know? I'm gonna take the shocking if I'm doing something, yes. Yeah. Cause I'm there, I'm, I'm on a show, I you know, I already know what time it is. I'm gonna take that shocking, but if I'm not doing something, so now you're hurting me and I'm telling you to stop and I and I know what it is to be in a situation. I've already gotten in a situation. Why would I wanna get in another situation, especially with a man that I'm with? You know what I'm saying? Uh -oh. Like I don't need a broken nose, a broken, a broken fucking back, mm -hmm. like I'm good. But now, so, but now, but now you're, but now you're sitting there, you're talking mm -hmm. and then why does he, he jumps up and he grabs you like he, he wanted to hit, hit you. What was that? And he just jumped up. The doctor was asking me, um, how did I feel about the drill or something? And I said, well, actually, and then I addressed the crowd. I'm like, you guys might think I'm aggressive because I got so angry at all the shocking that I screamed at him at, uh, in the backyard. I was like, why the fuck? Like, and I said, I was like, you. And I thought I, I was complete. I had lost it from all the shocking. If you grab a glass with the shock bracelet and they shock you, you're dropping the glass. It's like a, it, it's painful. Um, That's what I wanted to ask. On a scale of one to ten, what what is the pain? I, I don't. I don't remember the shocking. It's painful. It's something I'm sure that's uh, evil because you know we're on a show and they ain't gonna do something they can't do. But it's painful. So like so he, I wouldn't even shock you playing around. So he jumps up. He grabs you. And then he was he going to hit you or was he shaking you or what was he doing? I I I, I blanked out. I froze at that moment. I don't have fight in me, which is what's so hurtful because for you to sit around and say that. <clears throat> yeah, I saw this clip that they sent me because they do send us the episode days before it airs. For you to say that I am aggressive, I've never been aggressive to you in twenty years. For you to say that you're trying to change me, how? For you to say that, you know, for people to think that I can run around throwing apples and smacking people, like I'm not. What I am gonna do is defend myself. Mm. And I didn't even re I don't remember. I just know that he jumped and out and I just froze. So now he he immediately went to Instagram and we had posted on Hollywood Unlocked and defending it by blaming editing. Um, was it was it was what we saw what we saw? I mean, what happened? So if you notice and the, the, since the moment that episode aired to now, um, his, he's changed his story a few times. Mm -hmm. That's because he's lying. That was what happened. Um, the doctor, I mean, he tweets live when it comes to these episodes. Um, it happened. He wasn't clear to what was going to air. When they showed that that he grabbed me, he went on, he defended himself. Then they showed the apple. And then next thing you know, I became the aggressor and, and so on and so forth. And this is why I'm talking to you guys now, because what happened was what happened. Mm -hmm. And the next day he wasn't allowed to be by me without security, but we had to film the banner of the show, the opening, all those little snippets that you guys see in the beginning. And he was allowed to be by me because we had to do the couples thing. Yeah. And, but security was standing because they made sure that I felt comfortable with all of this. And the first thing he said to me, was, I was wasted. I don't remember yesterday. Mm. I fucked up, but I don't remember. So, and then turns around and tweets all this nonsense. So I know you saw Tammy Roman. She uh, sounded off on her Bonnet Chronicles. She said um, that you should take responsibility for being attacked. Or uh, She said that if you are a female that puts your hands on a man, you cannot count on the fact that he has been raised not to hit your ass back. And if he does hit you back, God forbid to me, I feel like it's uh, like that's a fight. If you initiate some shit, you got to get what you get and that's unfortunate what did you feel about that statement i couldn't i you know I've, I've i've taken a break from social media i i'm aware of some of the things she uh said i just feel that coming from a reality tv background she should have known better um she doesn't know me i don't know her i think she's funny i think she's great um but she should have known that there was a lot of uh things that didn't make it on air um I mean, you know, there, there are sides to the stories, and, and that's this is why I'm speaking out. I'm just like, yo, I was actually being, I was actually doing what I was supposed to do, removing myself, um, letting him know he was hurting me, and telling him to stop. And he just did it. Under normal circumstances, I would have exit stage left, but I'm on a show contractually there for all these days, and he continued to, to, to like try to get me to that point. You know what I'm saying? Especially knowing what I've been through. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like having a partner who knows your weaknesses and knows that you're there for a reason and knows that you're, you're going to therapy, knows that you've been hurt by men before, but using that as ammo. So your previous, your previous relationship, uh, where you, you had domestic violence, that was with Joe. <sighs> J 
Jason. Well, I'm just at, I'm I'm not sure what relate which um, relationship. Uh fuck. Um Ah, uh, shit. Um, you know, Jason, I, that's another, that's a whole other show because it's hard to, how do you heal from something that hmm. you watch somebody lie about for so many years? Mm -hmm. So it's just. So how are you healing? Because we know you're beautiful on the outside and we know inside that, you know, you can be as beautiful as you want to be on the inside, but how are you healing? I, I, this, okay. So the show was about a year ago. So I, for those that don't know that show was filmed a year ago, we're just not seeing what made it on the air. Um, it's hard to heal as a, just a, a, a person. Imagine having to heal in the public eye. Mm -hmm. So I, really never really talked about none of this because how do you heal with all this noise right i don't i i think i'm just I, i'm a strong one but it's really painful to watch men do what they do and then because they have a platform lie about it to your face like it's it's almost like you're making a mockery, like you're making fun of me. It's also my safety um, that I'm concerned about. You know, I'm 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 team to hear you. I'm, it's just me dying here. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm the oldest of fourteen, so um, I think that the way I was dealing with being in a relationship with Joe was tucking it in a back, just tucking it, hiding it, just because I can't stop. I have to continue going because people rely on me because I have to handle stuff because I have to grow in this business because I'm not going to fold. I'm not failing because you want me to. And I just keep going um, until your trauma meets you. So, you know, the words of my friend Charlemagne, either you meet your trauma or the tra trauma will meet you. I didn't walk into that house to discuss being in a domestic violence before. It just met me face to face. Um, and then watch your ex say something like, Tahiri will fight a man. I didn't fight him. Mm -hmm. I was scared to death. Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> and by all means today, I'm not a fighter. I'm just going to defend me, my mom, my sister. I'm the oldest. I'm going to defend everything I love and I worked hard for. Mm -hmm. Um but no, I don't walk around throwing apples or fighting a man. Like, I've been beaten before. I, I, I you know, that relationship left me with a fractured rib, uh, a broken nose because somebody was sending him a message. And, and I used to always say, you'll stop beefing out there. Oh, I'm out there still working. Um, and he hit me on that nose and then pushed me down a flight of stairs. I remember having to talk him out of letting me go that day. I remember having a plan to leave because the reason why he was so upset was because I was already leaving, um, looking through my phone and shit. But I had already told him, give me two weeks to pack up my things. Um, and he agreed to, and then started looking through my phone. Next thing you know, I, I got woken up by him dragging me from my ankle. Mm. I managed to get up from that floor. I remember having everything in my bag, all the things that I needed to have in that bag, my, my passport, my birth certificate, you know, the shit that I needed. That's all I needed to get like, some money that I had already had together because I didn't, I was raised better. I never saw my mom hit, my father hit my, my mom. I, I, you know, I knew better, but I don't know. It, I became that person that you hear about. But and you never I, thought you would be that person. Oh, and, 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 and the women need to know that a man will break your spirits before he actually puts his hands on you. It started with verbal abuse, emotional abuse. You know, and then eventually it turned to that. Um, I, and I still, I still fear for my safety, also protecting because, you know, he hurt me bad and I just stayed quiet. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I went to the hospital and he sat next to me and I lied to the doctors and said I was cleaning a cabinet and fell 
my kitchen. Um, so do and then you, he, so do you, then so, he rapped about it. Wait, what was the last part you just said? He rapped about it. He kind of, you know, kind of said something about fracturing a rib, you know, hitting her in the rib. It was just so, it's, it, and for years I've just sat there and, and I've let go and let God, at least I thought, um, I've tried to deal with this privately, but every chance you get, you sit there and you lie. And then you go as far as to doing 20 something minutes of your podcast and you say to Hiri, well, she will fight a man. No, I'm gonna fight you back if you're trying to hit me. And I didn't fight him. To sit there and have something to say about domestic violence. I, I've been, I've been home for what, three weeks trying to clear my mind on how to like, why 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 am i not with you physically but mentally you're trying to keep me in this prison hmm. well wow. i didn't know, i didn't know all that i i i i'm sorry if i i really didn't know all that happened i'm sorry that that happened and um and and so my question to you because i know you're talking about healing on the inside how does one who's been through that something like that end up with a vato who does it again like do you do you were there no signs were there was there nothing that no um i just i i don't i don't know i there's either two ways you can look at it uh i sit here and i try and i, I therapy is one um for one i i know what it is to to, to have to be hurt to, to somebody that loves you to put their hands on you I don't, I don't, like I said, I don't, but I am going to fight you back if you hit me. Um, I, it's therapy and, and, and just creating an inner circle and, and winding up with Vado in 20 years, never, he was never like, you know, we've never had these issues. We got on camera and it turned into that. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that, you know, um, now everything that Vado's saying and stuff, I believe is just because he's rolling with whatever story's airing. And that affects me because why not stand up and say, hey, I don't remember that day. Hey, I was wasted. Hey, um, I, I, you know, she was wrong. I was wrong. But I, I must have been igniting that shit that I know she has with her, although she's never been that person when it comes to me. Um, I have sex messages of his apologies and and um, and his, you know, his I should have handled you different in that house. And I let pride and ego. But, does, but doesn't he realize every time he makes an excuse publicly and lie on Instagram that is re-victimizing you? Does he not get that part? I don't know it yet. I can't worry about them, Jason. But I guess I, I just have to worry about me. Um, I have receipts. I just don't. I'm not that girl. Like, you think I'm going to sit here and look through this shit that I could post this shit so the world could see this shit? Because, it, no, I have to get better with me. So what I had to do was kind of disconnect myself from that. You know, I don't hit me on Monday. Checking up on you. What are you checking up? If I'm mm -hmm. that person, I've been that person to you. Why are you reaching out to me still? You know, why are you saying I'm downstairs? I remember hitting my manager and people saying, yo, this is why I have to move. Don't be downstairs, you know, or speak up and say, hey, I was super twisted. That's not an excuse. I fucked up. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't I wasn't holding it down when it came to Tahiri. And for those of you watching or listening, wherever you're seeing this, Tahiri didn't reach out to me for this interview. I reached out to her. You know, some people do come to me because they want to put shit out or they're trying to whatever. I, I reached out to you because... You know, I don't know you, but I've watched you from a distance. And I know like with the model thing and then this thing, I'm like, you know, I know there are a lot of women specifically right now with the whole protect Meg, protect black women conversation happening that, you know, like you just said, which I know is going to be powerful because it hit me that, you know, they, your spirit gets broken first. Like your the layup is once they break mm -hmm. that spirit to get you ready for the physical. And I think a lot of women don't even believe they're being abused because they're not getting punched, but you're being yeah. you're being broken down. You're being broken down. So when the time does come that that hand gets put on you, you won't leave because you feel like you you have no energy. Where are you going? You're not good enough. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. With me, it started with you look tired. Why you always look so tired? You so old. Mm. You know, um, it. <sighs> And then it's just, it's just, it, it, it was just too much in these last fucking three weeks. It's just been a lot. Um, a lot that's triggered, like the, the Meg stuff. Um, the, the people going back and forth online about this shit, like, this is why we don't speak up. 
I don't want to have to deal with that on top of trying to get, you know, figure out how to stay healthy, be healthy, how to work my inside. Um, and then comes the ex who clearly is lying and his friends know, and he's just, ha, 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 ha. Well, you know, I hope she's doing well, but you text me Wednesday when this shit went viral. Yo, you in town? Yo, he text me. Why are you asking me, fam? Like, leave me alone at this point. And yes, I went back. Like, every woman has gotten beaten before. Yes, and I left. And yes, we've spoken off and on throughout the years. Yes, and yes, we filmed the same. Yes, we're on the show. Yes. My sick brain probably thinking, you know, you keep your friends close and your enemies closer. I'm, he, he, you know, he knows me. I was with him for such a long time. He knows there's no mom, there's no, there's no dad. There's a mom who doesn't really know what this industry is like. There's, I'm the oldest, you know what I'm saying? I'm about the cousins, you know what I'm saying? So it comes to, you come fear. Then you start to think about him. Like to hear you haven't spoken, but I'm tired. I just want to just be free. Like, just leave me alone and stop lying. Stop putting your hands on women. So what do you tell yourself and what should women tell, tell themselves to regain their value and their confidence to be able to be solid enough to leave a situation that, you know, may be abusive? Um, you're not alone. You're not alone. I did it. I left and I've had to endure this bully for the last 10 years. And I even befriended the bully. I didn't know what else to do. Um, I... I know it's scary, but you have to find help. Whether it's a friend, it's a family member, um, whether it, it could fucking sometimes be a stranger. There's hotlines, you know what I'm saying? It's creating a, a plan to find a way to escape. If I would have known then, I wouldn't even have that breakup conversation. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's to find a way to safety. And just kind of try to be smart about it, but you, but they can definitely do it. I did it. I've had women. I think women kind of know my story because I've had fans come up to me crying that they're getting their ass beat at home. You know what I'm saying? Um, but again, abuse comes in different forms. Mm. But hotline yeah. friends, and you have to go pack all your belongings. Not all. You can leave. You know, none of that material shit matters at the end of the day. But the things that you need to, you got a little back. You can save some money. You gotta go. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I have a question. What would you say to young men out there that may be potentially the, the victimizers? You know, a lot of young guys don't know how to deal with their emotions. Do you have anything to say to them? And I'm talking about the young dudes, not dudes that's in their 30s or 40s, you know, that clearly know what to do. But the younger guys that's out here dating, maybe going down the wrong path. In terms of relationships, um, I think that the age really doesn't matter. You'd be surprised. Um, I think therapy, I think people understanding that therapy is not for crazy people where, you know, where I come from, therapy is like not is a bad word. Like you must be crazy if you're at therapy. I think it's um, um, finding that mentor, finding somebody you can speak to um, and guide them the right way. I think, um, that again, it comes from home, uh, walking away. Um, no matter what, a man should never put his hands on a woman. Uh, you know, mm. everybody's saying, she threw, period, she threw the apples. Okay, so that means that we wear a short dress and that means I deserve to get raped? Um, but I also believe that women should not put their hands on a man either. I think that two people should respect each other, period. Um, my mom said this to me a long time ago, and that's probably, it was probably coming from that breakup with Joe. She said to me, when a relationship goes down that route, that is, it's no longer going to work. Mm -hmm. He's going to continue to beat you, and the, you disrespected the whole union. Like, it's just done. Mm -hmm. So... I, I just feel like two people shouldn't be putting their hands on each other, period. But by all means, a man should never. Like, walk away. I don't care if you have to fucking do the matrix if she's trying to come back through some shit. Mm. So, so what's next for Tahiri? Are you coming back to Love & Hip Hop? Are you writing a book? Are you... Well, like I said, this shit um, was filmed a year ago. Um, Love & Hip Hop, we still have unfinished business, but due to the pandemic, everything's on hold. Mm -hmm. Um, I uh, was in the mix of opening a juice bar that's on hold in Harlem. Uh, of course, in all the in the midst of all the shit that I've been going through, I managed to feed my brain some positivity. I am very proactive. I practice uh, just waking up trying to be a better me every day. Mm -hmm. um, and so I started to you know write shit down, vision boards and affirmations, and go to therapy. Excuse me and 
my therapist told me um, to write. And I was like, man, nobody got time for that. Mm -hmm. I get the fuck out of here. She's like, well, use your notes. I'm like, I do that shit either. Like, no, no, I don't have time for that. And then I remember one day not being able to sleep. It was a night. It was like one morning. I was tight because I had to be up early. And I just wrote what I had on, like, on my mind. And I was able to fall, out, fall asleep. And I was like, wow, she was fucking right. So I started to write. And so it's just writing and writing and writing. I actually did write a book uh, that, you know, shout out to Corona, COVID-19, being home, I was able to finish it. Mm -hmm. So just this week I have, I got my, my author's copies. Like, so I'm looking at the book physically and it's called, uh, I got me, I was hashtag, I got me. Um, Melissa asked me about what the I got me stood for. Um, is it no man or I could do this on my own? And I'm like, no, the relationship with myself being my own hype man. Waking up every day and remembering that it starts from me. I have to love me first before I can love anyone else. Mm. And so I wrote 31 days of affirmations and journal space. So mm. every day is an affirmation and there's a space where you can kind of break down, you know, how you're feeling at that moment after reading that affirmation. And it's it's a book that could last forever because every year you grow, every every six months, you know, every time you go through something and you're able to just keep reusing the book. So it'll be coming out shortly. It's called I Got Me. Have you ever thought about writing? We had Jennifer Lewis here on the show a couple of times and she had told Melissa and I at the time, you know, write your stories. And I ended up writing my first book. Have you thought about writing a book about your life and about some of your experiences that may help other women? Yes, I started. I started to write it. Um, and then I started to write this whole fucking I Got Me. But right before I had started really small, uh, and because I come from, you know, a hustler, my daddy, um, I kind of thought about writing. The, it started with um, Hustler's Daughter, um, but that one uh, short-lived. But eventually, I think I'm going that that route because I enjoy putting I Got Me together. Yeah. So It's so therapeutic. I mean, you really do. Once it's on paper, it's a weird thing. It's almost like you feel like you've released it, you know? I'm so proud. I'm over here smacking people with the whole thing from, like, printing it, like, look. It's done. <laughs> no, um, yeah. Got it in. Yeah. Um, it, it was. It was. It was great. It was great. It was a great experience. And um, I, like I said, I wasn't. I wasn't really paying attention to my therapist. I was like, "Bitch, I don't pay you to tell me to write." <laughs> and then I wrote. Yeah. <laughs> oh so, yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, I've really been working on me. Um, and it's just sad, you know. We're on TV, and and things that happen on TV stick with people, and they just think that you are this person that they kind of make you up to be but i'm not mad at the networks i mean they have a hit show to create and we give them the drama mm -hmm. um but no i'm not a fighter it's uh, i'm tired i have no fight in me so i'm um, i'm i'm on this journey personally of self-love uh where i you know i aggressively took steps to lose weight i started praying at, like literally going out and earn and grounding myself every day and saying god take everybody off my path that's not on the same journey um are you are you doing the same work and do you find that to be help is it good is it hard it's hard of course because the other day i was like god if he's not meant for me and then he took him and i was like god i didn't say that Dad, you work out you work fast <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i find you know i, I find um, joy in sitting in in the tub i have to have a tub and i just sit there it's where i my bathroom is my my place um but I praise God, I praise the Lord every time I feel like praising him. There's no there's no time in my praying. I could be driving and you're like, what are you doing? I'm like talking to God. There's days when I don't feel well and they're doing my makeup and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. <laughs> yes, I, I'm feeding myself all the love that comes from the Lord. I, I often used to think about what was my purpose and he is my purpose. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm reading uh, what, I, what on earth am I here for, the four agreements. Uh, right yeah, now, how, how is the four agreements? Because that's been uh, popping up on my timeline a lot. It changed your life, really? um, it changed your life, yes. Um, so you know, I've just been really pretty much like I said, practicing how, how to stay positive, feed my brain what it needs. Um, you know, I created my I was walking out the door and I had my old vision board, and I now have a whiteboard, so I walked back in. And I was late and I just started to write. I re it just came to me. Um, I light my incense, I, I light my candles, and I have me time. I cut off the phone at certain times of the day. And I don't have, I don't feel the need to be everywhere anymore. I know who I am. I don't feel the need to be naked all the time. You know, I'm not pressed. Um, I am comfortable with me. Um, and uh, if before I didn't practice how to walk away from toxic, because sometimes you don't know, uh, I, I'm good at walking away from toxic. Yeah, I, I realized that you can, you can see it two ways. You attract what you are, or while you're healing, you become so attractive that people want some of that light. So mm. either way, you have to be careful you have to protect it at all times. 
So that's where I'm at. Well, listen, you're you're welcome to come back here anytime. Uh, I appreciate you for you know trusting us with this conversation. Um, I'm I don't know you, but I'm forbidding Vado from being in your life. In fact, we will I will call some people in Harlem or something, figure something yeah. out. I want to see you happy, and I want you to continue to use your platform to inspire women because I feel like there's those of you who are still young and connected to this gen generation before you that can provide wisdom and examples of strength and and overcoming and becoming that i think you know more people need to be able to see you beyond love and hip-hop and see that you were strong enough to walk away and and strong enough to pivot when you saw you were going down the similar path and continue to be you know a strong dominican black woman preach um yeah i i, I mean i'm ah it just it i had to get it out because i think it's very unfair, all this victim shaming and all this the nonsense that we women go through sometimes. Um, I just want to heal at peace and, and, and I am happy, um, but I want to be together for the next person that comes into my life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I create the same mistakes, so. Well, look, Thank you guys come back me. anytime. When you have the book, let me know. We'll definitely buy it. Yes, soon, it's coming soon. I'm just looking at it now, the baby, seeing if everything's perfect. Well, we'll be ready. Okay. Anything else we need to cover before we leave that I forgot? Oh no. Um, oh no. Just you know, make sure that sound bite says "Get out, bitches." Just go. Just, just <laughs> leave, 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 leave the abuser. Leave, leave the abuser. All right. Well, thank you, Tahiri. Come back anytime. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.